Okay. Well, it's uh, it's seven o'clock, seven p.m. Thanks to everybody here for being on time, and uh, welcome to our uh, first time all virtual ASQ section fifteen ten fifteen fifteen. Um, meeting. Uh, welcome you all to this. Uh, we have, if you're if you're not aware, we do. We, we started a couple months ago by uh, streaming our our in-person meetings. Um, haven't had much participation in that uh, in those venues over the past few months, but uh, we have had a few, and we'll continue to do that once we get back into uh, into conducting in-person meetings. Which, for all of us, I hope it happens pretty soon. Um, the, uh, the presentation that you see on the screen right now is just a loop, the informational loop from, from the section, uh, to, just to, uh, to provide you some basic information about the section and, and some of the happenings and trainings that are, that are planned. Um, I would like to introduce at this point, uh, Carolina Leon, who's the, the, uh, the chair for, uh, for section 1510. Um, Carolina, any, any remarks? Hello. Hi, um, just hope everyone's doing really well. Thank you for joining us. I know that we made a last minute change um, <laughs> going from meeting at a tropical acres to virtual meeting, but I think this is a very relevant topic. I'm actually really excited to hear about it since all of the oh. Lost you, Carolina. Is anybody, is anybody hear me? Yeah, I we lost her. For okay. Uh, hopefully she'll come back in. Um, okay, well we will uh, we will be uh, uh, there'll, there'll be not oh are you back, <laughs> Carolina? We lost you there for for about fifteen Sorry seconds. Sorry about that. Well, anything you want to finish up? <laughs> okay, um, so. Today's uh, session, uh, the presentation is uh, business continuity and uh, resiliency, how to continue operating despite um, a crisis. Um, the, uh, as, as we all know, the corona, coronavirus disruption is here and hurricane season is approaching. So anyone with any disaster preparedness and business continuity responsibilities will learn about business risks um, in, this, um, uh, in this presentation. And um, you know, when we talk about hurricanes or supplier quality issues, uh, the market or regulatory demands, uh, you know, and other business disruptions, those can seriously impact the bottom line as we're witnessing firsthand now all across the, all across the economy. So uh, Deborah tonight will share some examples of best practices and ways to identify and mitigate risks uh, and ideas with also ideas for building a business continuity plan to continue generating revenue despite a crisis and resources available to Florida uh, companies. I, I would uh, just uh, ask as we go forward here that everybody uh, um, mute themselves, please, unless there's something to, uh, uh, to contribute at that point, just so we can minimize any background, background sounds uh, and other kinds of distractions uh, during the presentation. Um, at the end of the presentation, we will ask everybody to participate in a, in a survey. Okay, at the end of the survey, we will ask, uh, oh, sorry, at the end of the presentation, we will ask that everyone uh, complete a, a survey um, and we'll use the survey um, uh, participation as a, uh, as a source for our, uh, our door prize. It's uh, not actually a door today, but it's a, it's a virtual door. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll take care of that uh, uh, later on. So at this point, I would like to get to the presentation and introduce our speaker. Uh, our speaker tonight is uh, Deborah Calvijo. She's a regional CFO for Safe Built Incorporated. Uh, Debbie is a, is also a third party provider for Florida Makes. That's the organization I work for, actually. Uh, and what she does is assess and advise uh, businesses on continuity, risk management, and other areas to improve and grow their businesses. She's a Six Sigma Green Belt and sits on the advisory board for the USF Cybersecurity Program. Prior to her current, um, prior to her, her uh, current position, Debbie worked with EDNF Man, a UK commodities firm, as regional finance director for the Americas. She contributed to the international audit team, creating and developing best-in-class financial procedures 
that globally safeguard against cyber fraud while ensuring business continuity and resilience, resiliency after crisis. Excuse me one more. Okay. Um, that, oh, okay. So as CFO with Unipower, she had responsibility for IT and HR functions as well as for finance. She's had financial uh, leadership assignments in Florida and Massachusetts for Siemens and had several finance leadership positions with other multinationals like Tyco, Sensormatic, and Citibank. Deborah has received the Circle of Excellence Leadership Award in recognition for her technical skills enabling her successful management of implementation of four SAP ERP oh, yeah, conversions in post-merger and acquisition integrations. She earned a magna cum laude from the University of Miami with a Bachelor of Science degree in Systems Analysis and holds an MBA with International Finance Concentration, both from the University, uh, including from the University um, from Miami, of Miami. So Debbie, uh, if you uh, want to take the a moment here to, to, to uh, share your presentation screen with us. All right. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate that introduction. Thank you. And I am going to see if I can become somewhat technical set. Okay, it's very simple. Just click on the green share screen. I did. <laughs> give, me one, give me a second because I'm actually going into a um, presentation mode. Yeah. So hang on. I'm actually seeing your, can you stop sharing uh, for a second, I think maybe, or do I, let's see. Um, we're, Is that a bit better? No one is sharing at this point. Yeah. Okay. Now we see you? that. Yep. We, we have it. You now. Okay. Now I can probably go into a little bit. There we go. How's that? I just, all right. So again, um, thank you, Phil. And uh, for everybody on the call, this is uh, obviously a, a new um, endeavor. We're doing this uh, live on, on uh, video com, if you will. And I guess it's not new technology but it shows us what we can really do. And uh, we'll, we'll touch upon that in technology and a lot of different aspects of business continuity and resiliency. Um, won't have all the answers for our current situation, but we'll try to talk about a few things that um, you know, can be planned for and, and how to um, move forward in the different uh, aspects of organizations here. Um, so without further ado, um, we'll talk about business risks ways to improve resiliency, some of the best, you know, best practices. Um, we want to talk about the risks of not uh, doing anything and, and how do we create this environment in our companies uh, for business continuity. Um, I'll talk about a few free resources that are available, not just in the manufacturing space, but um, in you know, other spaces. As Phil mentioned at the beginning, this is mainly geared and, and presented by Florida Makes, uh, for which I'm a third party provider. But again, there are more than just uh, you know, applications to manufacturing. So for those of you in, in terms of quality, I'm sure there's a good amount of you that are in manufacturing, manufacturing. but for those that aren't, we'll still cover some important aspects. We'll go into how do we deal with, just as for an example, leadership, processes, people. Um, we'll talk about client supply chain. We'll also talk about you know, manufacturing the plants, but there's applicability throughout. And how to handle coronavirus virus. I'm not sure any of us know yet, but there are some websites that have good resources for us. Um, and then we'll go into a Q&A uh, for any questions. If you have questions along the way, uh, maybe you wanna jot them down and we'll take them at the end or Phil, if you wanna uh, flag them throughout, that's fine as well. So um, a little bit about Florida Makes that uh, Phil, Phil's associated with and I work as a third party provider. Uh, the mission is really to put in technology and productivity and make Florida manufacturing the best it can be. There's assessments, there's coaching, there's training, there's uh, many different grants that are available. And the whole point is to really improve and make manufacturing in Florida the best it can be. Um, it's part of the National Institute of Standards and uh, Technology, the MEP network nationally. So we want to look at, you know, how do we grow businesses? Where can we use technology? One example might be today, but not all companies, believe it or not, believe in teleconferencing. Uh, we look at import-export. 
We look at, you know, how can we train the workforce and this, you know, can apply not just to manufacturing, but across the board, supply chain, process improvement. Every company should really have processes and, and standard operating processes, best practices. So definitely applicability. And since we're talking about quality, we all know that quality is the never ending process of continual improvement. Uh, so very apropos here. And then how do we work with sustainability? So that's more or less our, you know, the Florida makes mission statement. And again, focusing manufacturing, which I do in part, but I go beyond just manufacturing as well. So why do we want to consider the risks in Florida? And we focus again on Florida. Some of you may not be in Florida, but I guess today's world, we all understand why we should all be considering the risks, not just uh, the folks on this little uh, peninsula here. You can see that in the blue is really all the companies, right, that have federal contracts. And for those of us that have worked with companies and federal contracts, we have to have contingencies, planning. There's an extra level of requirements. Um, and then, you know, again, we've got everything in the blue, which is concentration on not just manufacturing, but all across. Here's all the businesses that would likely be impacted by a weather situation. Well, if we put the rest of the U.S. on this map today, we're all being impacted in one way or another. So I'm hoping that a few of the comments and, and learning experiences we've had will, will apply across the board. Again, we have a lot more uh, focus in statistics um, with regards to Florida and weather impacts and flood zones. But if we step back for just a moment, and I'm sure many of us have listened and heard all of the press conferences, and I just bring the attention and the applicability of data and understanding and analyzing data. We are looking at a slide about flood zones. Why is it important that we have different plans in place for Florida? But just think about, and without you know, quoting names, how focused is or are these press conferences on the data and an analytics? So I'll share a couple of facts here, but again, this is ap applicable in understanding data and analytics. And sometimes you say, well, you know, I don't need that, but we really can make better decision making when we understand historical data. And if you think about it right here, we've got 51% of the manufacturers in Florida are in flood zones. So whether you call it tropical storm, you call it hurricane, and this applies more to that, or surges, we can, you know, um, all of this is in, in areas that we've got to focus. Do we have the right systems? Do we have the right physical? This is more geared to the physical plants. But we, you know, if we stretch our imagination not too far, we can think about you know, demographics, people, statistics, ages, and I think the comparability of understanding data is critical in any organization. Um, went a little too fast there. We've got some more, you know, 20% of our manufacturers are located in areas likely to be evacuated for Florida. And we've got 19 are both in flood and storm zones. So obviously we need to prepare, we need to understand what do we do, alternate source, alternate locations, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. For Florida, again, we continue to focus here on the facts. We've got 20,000 manufacturers. 80% of them are less than 20 employees. And what we've learned from FEMA is that following a disaster, and it doesn't necessarily mean a hurricane disaster, because other disasters, as we know, can impact financials, 40 to 60% of small businesses will never open after a disaster. So we really need to be there and help and look at all alternatives. And Florida makes prides itself in providing resources, research on how to help these smaller businesses. We've heard some remedies that are out there today and places to go in our current situation. But we obviously want to help these folks. And this is a good statistic to understand and then hopefully turn it around. For 90% of the smaller companies, if they fail, they'll fail within a year unless they can resume in five days of business operations. Again, it, this really tells us not just in a hurricane, not just in a power outage, not just in whatever different disaster crisis modes, but today, 
we really need to work and focus on having plans in place, whether it's reserves, um, places, alternate places to work in. And from a business continuity perspective, what this really means is that companies need to focus time, effort, and the entire organization on really constructing a good business continuity plan. For large companies, 20% you know, 20 of the large companies spend 10 days a month looking at continuity plans. Continuity plan means, again, and I'll focus on our group right here, quality, the never ending process you know, of continual improvement. A business continuity plan is not stagnant. It is a working document that continually needs to be reviewed, updated, revised. Some of the risks that we have to identify, and not just in Florida, but throughout the world and anywhere where we are operating our uh, businesses, yes, hur hurricane, well, you could have a snowstorm if you're up north, flood, um, should we say health pandemics, I'm sure that's on everybody's mind today, and it is uh, it, rightly so. We could have power outages, internet outages. So how about if you have the last two that I spoke about combined? We're on a virtual meeting right now. Fortunately, we have technology. What if power, internet, and health situations come up together? How do we handle that? Um, hopefully it'll never happen, but those are the things that you think about in advance of the situation. Um, fires, blizzards, explosions, internal, external gas, not necessarily you know, uh, malicious, but there could be a gas explosion. So all these different things are risks that we identify that we have a plan, we try to build plans around and obviously can't mitigate everything as we've learned and maybe can't even predict everything or understand what could happen. But we have to focus and look at, you know, what are our local resources, our state local, you know, resources, federal resources. There's a couple websites there and at the end I'll provide that list as well. And then who can help? Florida Makes is there. They have a wealth of advisors, a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of understanding for the manufacturing environment folks that are associated with them as well. You know, do you have supplier issues? Uh, when borders close, can you get your products? If you can't, where do you alternate manufacturing? Um, same thing, if a customer, if you, you know, you need to work with customers, are they communicated or not communicating for right now because of situations? We talk about transportation and logistics. And you think about that in the manufacturing realm, but take a moment and think about a bank a teller, a teller who commutes by train, a teller who uses Uber, a te you know, whatever that is, that transportation and logistics, not just of material, but people, um, is transportation operational? Is it safe? How can we build things that we can guarantee, or at least to the best of our ability, plan for putting our people where we need them in situations of crisis, emergencies? Is there alternatives? And I'll give you one quick example, but on a manufacturing floor, there's maybe 20 ladies who have kids, schools close. Well, how about a, using one of the big conference rooms to have a, you know, not a home learning, but an office learning. Of course, we wanna make sure that in our situation today, maybe we wanna take temperatures on the way in. But those are those, all those considerations, all those thinking out of the box, um, should be things that we could put into a good business continuity plan. We want to look at the skill set. Do we have cross training? Um, before our current situation, I think one of the things that has been escalating is active shooter. There's specific training for that. Has your organization trained for that? Is it prepared for that? This is probably the one situation where when you do an evacuation to a certain zone, you don't all want to go to the same place. Maybe your leaders have to know a different code to disperse rather than to all gather in one place. Different things. And then cybersecurity. Um, we really need to focus more in our organizations on cybersecurity, not just because of the malicious hacking, but are all of our people ready to use teleconferencing? Can all of our people who are not on the manufacturing floor um, able to work remote? So I would say we'd have to look at, you know, and what are the firewalls and can everybody connect and can we do our financial banking transactions without risks or mitigating risks. Um, so a lot of different items and things go right into our business continuity plans. 
some of the statistics that are probably quite scary is, again, 61% of small businesses have experienced a cyber attack in the last 12 months. 34% of all documented attacks are to manufacturers. 60,000 is the average cost of data breaches because you're not talking just about that immediate impact. You're talking about monitoring for clients for 12 months, uh, monitoring for employees for 12 months, a lot more goes into it. And insurance is not always the answer. In some case it is, but it should be the last resort because it only steps in at the end. You wanna be able to continue operating and if you plan correctly and you put all the controls in place, um, you will hope to mitigate some of these situations. In transportation and logistics, you know, 47% of the, the gas stations um, were not working after Hurricane Irma. And we all remember, for those of us from Florida, what the traffic jams looked like. Um, I gave you another example. It's not just taking gasoline from one place to another, but in situations like this, where, you know, how do you transport people publicly? Can you? Can't you? What's an alternative? And we talked already about 40 to 60% of small businesses never reopen their doors following a disaster. We would like very much at Florida Makes to, to work with them for this particular reason, to turn that around so that that's no longer the case. And there's many resources out there, more than we probably imagine, that can assist and help. Um, and that was, you know, the statistics coming in way before our current situation. Natural disasters, believe it or not, five earthquakes hit Florida near the Alabama state line in March of 2019. It probably, you know, many of us didn't even hear about that. So it's not just weather like a hurricane, but we've talked about blizzard, snowstorm, uh, California, obviously we have the earthquakes and natural disasters as well. Um, I don't know for many of you, how many of you remember the Tylenol scare in 1982? Um, but there were 31 million bottles of the product that had to be recalled. And we don't have even the statistics financially of what that meant. But because Tylenol had a good plan in place, they were able to come back, they could recover, they're still a product today. Unfortunately, they had seven deaths when that happened, but they had a good plan to come back. And that's what we want to make sure that we can help all businesses and all manufacturing in Florida to create so that they can at least mitigate to the best ability all these situations. Today, it's probably too, too, too soon to give you statistics. You can see them on every website. You can see them everywhere. The domino effect in the economy, we haven't even started to measure. And how could you possibly prepare for something so unexpected, so unknown, there are, again, certain things that can be done. The example of putting the, you know, care for students, for children on site, making sure it is secured. Um, knowing the contact list of your employees, it's amazing how many companies don't have a current up-to-date list of their employees. What if you needed to contact them? What if somebody, you know, today, uh, hopefully not in organizations, but if somebody did have a positive outcome on their testing. How do you get a hold of the employees if you don't have a current list? Is it updated quarterly? So while a lot of this is common sense, it really needs to be you know, documented in writing in place and then updated on a periodic basis. Some more examples of just what's happened is, you know, we see an Air Force base, we see that right in here, this used to be an auto shop that no longer exists after uh, Hurricane Michael. You know, again, manufacturing no longer, a hangar with 100 miles per hour wind. So a lot of damage from different types of disasters and it just doesn't happen in one place. The domino effect is everywhere. And obviously, you know, today, the airlines, the travel, the cruises, there's a lot of impact to employees and, and so forth. So we really want to think ahead in the organizations and the companies to not mitigate everything, but at least have a plan in place. And what does Florida Makes do? Again, we're talking a little bit more towards the manufacturing side, 
they have free assessments, they have uh, advisors that go, and there's three levels. One, understand if you've been impacted in the past, what were the results of that disaster? So we could learn from those. And there's a survey out there that is um, free to not just manufacturing, but to everybody and available. And that's basically the disaster impacted. How were you impacted? Um, were you ready? And these are pretty short surveys, but they're very helpful because they start to get you to think about the different concepts that are important that we're talking about. Um, the continuity assessment is a deep dive and it's available more to the manufacturing side. Um, again, at no charge uh, currently due to some of the grants and some of the employees that are focused in, and uh, on this. So just to share with you from those different surveys, there were 137 surveys fielded on were you impacted by a disaster? 90% of the people that were surveyed or that filled out the questionnaire said yes by Irma or another storm. One quarter of those were part of the Department of Defense supply chain in Florida. Um, and two thirds had direct impact, major issues, um, one to two weeks stoppage, and you know, two weeks more of interruptions, um, employees, power, customer issues, supply issues, IT. You can see the statistics for yourself. Um, but again, there are alternatives and there are ways to, to help the businesses so that we can avoid some of these uh, statistics and, and turn them to more positives and to negatives. Some of the things that were most surprising when this uh, survey was conducted, um, people said that even though they were impacted, only 2% said that they needed help creating a continuity or emergency plan. And that was pretty surprising because, you know, 40% of those that talked about the next um, survey, the readiness survey said they had no plan, but yet they didn't need help. And I think part of it is how do you define what a business continuity plan is? What does it help you with? What does it mean? And I think in doing some of these assessments myself, that's what I've seen. Yes, we're ready. Yes, we have something. We know it. Yeah, it's in our head. But does everybody know it? No. Can somebody, you know, put it in place and execute? No. Um, so we try to get that education level out to the businesses, and especially small ones. There's many of those in Florida and get them to a different place and um, mitigate some of the risks. Um, right, and then um, again, two thirds, again, this is on the, are you ready for a disaster? Two thirds um, have our critical suppliers, which means if something happens to that supplier, they're going to impact their clients because there's, they are the primary supplier. And so, issue and it's more of an issue as well um, if you have a supplier that's a sole supplier and you don't have anywhere else to go for things so we look for different ways to help there's a you know in in the printing business maybe you have you can send files electronically and get your printing done in another state another country um, these are all examples of how to think out of the box and part of what becomes your business preparedness um, it also talks about when do you need to execute on the business preparedness plan and gives responsibilities, who's responsible, who should be doing this. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, you know, 40% or close to half have no emergency or continuity uh, plan in place, which obviously, you know, if you don't have it in place, the impact is going to be much greater, not just, you know, operationally, whatever you do operationally is going to impact financials. So what are the goals? Any questions thus far before I go on? All right. Um, we want to keep generating revenue. We want to get back up and running as quickly as possible. Sometimes that means big sacrifices. That means sometimes we have to take big measures so that we can get there and get back up and running quickly. Um, you know, we, if somebody has an accident, we may have to bring another staff. We can't wait for the person to come back. If a supply chain that we've worked with for 30 years, suddenly they have something that breaks and we can't get supplies. If we had a business continuity and plan, we could get it elsewhere. Um, 
again, we want to make sure that we can come back as quickly as possible. Do we have generators in case of um, hurricane? Um, do we have technology to work from home like our current situation or don't we? And then we want to make sure that we protect our physical assets and our employees. Um, those are the two main elements that we need to continue and come back and become resilient as soon as possible. So a lot of this goes back to if we do the risk assessment and we understand what the gaps are in a company, then we can mitigate them by putting plans in place for readiness. Want to first assess, find out what we need to put in the business continuity plan. There are some basics, but there are nuances for specialized manufacturing or specialized companies that have specialized products. Um, we want to continuously improve and close the gaps. And one of the main things that we've seen throughout is leadership may have the plan in place. It might even be written in some instances, but what good is it if nobody knows it's there and employees are not trained and cross-trained on how to execute on it when it's called. So we went into one organization, they said, oh yeah, we have all our codes for emergency. Red is this, blue is that, purple is this, green is this. I'm like, okay. Then I said, can we go talk to somebody on the floor? If I say code red, what does it mean? I got a blank stare. And if I say code purple, nobody knew. So I can't stress enough that part of the success of business continuity planning is communicating throughout the organization. And again, I mentioned this before, it's not a static document, but it needs to be updated. So I think this audience is the perfect audience to own business continuity plans if you don't already. And um, it, I think it's the best home because you're always looking for improvement and it is a working document. Um, so we want to make sure that we've covered in the business continuity plans, things as basic as you have the customer list to things as complex as if I have a hazmat situation, how do I handle it? To if I can't get my raw materials, where do I go? Do I have a succession planning for leadership? We touch a lot of different aspects and they, you can see them right here. Um, some of these you'll say, wait a minute, these really apply only to manufacturing? But not necessarily, if we look at people, if we look at um, you know, market, financials, regulatory, even though we might think that regulatory only applies to one sector, it doesn't. Um, leadership is important. So you can see, we look at all these different aspects. Um, you know, has the management team done the analysis for supplies, for delays, cybersecurity, market issues? Are employees cross-trained? Our backup systems in place, we've talked about SOPs and how incredibly critical they are for operations. If you lose some of your best people who know by heart these processes and if they're written down, the likelihood is you can probably wiggle your way through them. If they're non-existent, how do you wiggle your way through and you don't know? You might miss an entire you know, raw material going into a product if it's not written down. If you don't have good bombs, then you know, your bill of materials may be um, incomplete. Again, um, so it's just we can go on and on and go as deep, or you know, if we start off and do it through iterations, you could do different levels, um, not necessarily having to do everything all at once. We really want to go back to what are the benefits. You want to stay in business, you know, mitigate any risks operationally, which will obviously help financially. We want to be able to grow the business and have a plan where if we have to retract for a little bit, we can come back and grow. Um, we want to be able to help the community, not just ourselves. If everything is around us is doing well, maybe our supplier is having an issue or our neighbor is having an issue and our neighbor could be anywhere from, you know, next door to another state to a different country. But we really want to work with the community as a whole. And of course, the focus for Florida Makes is Florida. Um, and looking at the resiliency, looking at grants, training, loans, really expertise in getting the best manufacturing we can in Florida. Um, mentioned briefly, and you can uh, either, I think we're recording this so you can look at it a little bit later, um, but these two initial surveys are available right through this website here, and you get immediate feedback with a report. They're very short. They talk about where you impacted, 
and they talk about are you ready for a disaster this one um, I would you know invite you to talk to Phil a little bit more or, you know if you want to work through Florida makes for manufacturers if you want to go into deep dives that are and you're not in the manufacturing space um, I'll have my contact information at the end as well be happy to work with you and there's some other additional uh, resources and websites that you can um, go to and identify as well. So um, that is pretty much the information that I wanted to communicate. I'd love to ha entertain any questions and um, want to thank you for, for you know, taking time, especially out of the evening and not being at a dinner, but out in front of your computers uh, to look at this. I hope it's given you some background information and uh, be more than happy again to you know, either Phil or myself can help you in, for your individual situations. Amy Lee is the director uh, for business continuity for Florida Makes. Her contact information is also here. And, um, you know, any questions that I can field? Well, I'll, I'll ask the, uh, the question of the elephant in the room. So with preparedness and where we are now, uh, do you think your procedures that you've just been talking about uh, can help us in situations like we're in right now? Or do you think, you know, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the current planning relative to the business continuity planning you've been talking about? So there, I won't say it's a 100% solution, but I mentioned a couple things. If you have a customer list, you can obviously uh, communicate with your clients. In the situation that I mentioned where we are trying to reduce, you know, contact and so forth, um, you know, there's there's issues there that can you bring the people into a contained space at work and have them work um we we have a solution that we're working with today you know we're looking on on video conference and we're working through meetings this way so i think those are three very applicable things that would be in a business continuity plan that would help from you know a containment, um, another thing, can we put infrared temperature reading you know instruments at our front door to the operations? You know that would be something else that possibly we could also look at. Um, and so these are all different things. Is it 100% proof? Can it give us all the answers? No, but it definitely will help if you plan for it in advance, so that we can you know get ahead of the game or at least do as much containment as possible. Does that answer your question, Steve? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Any, I'm going Other to questions? go, yes, anything else? I think I'm gonna go back up one slide. I skipped one. Hmm, maybe I didn't, all right. Uh, I had a slide, and Phil, maybe what we can do is I'm gonna actually try to shoot out of this and go into, we've actually developed a, um, and I shouldn't have done that. We're not supposed to touch our face, but um, I think I'll show I'll show you a PDF, which gives you some some other additional facts, you know, and findings for this particular situation. If I may, I'm going to try technologically to to do this correctly. Um, and Phil, I think you can also make this available, mm -hmm. right? Um, so here's some things about you know supply chain, and I think they help also address your question, Steve. Um, you know, have you already had interruptions? Do you expect them? And what are some of the bullets that we can work with? You know, are you prepared and how to prepare for next disruptions or the next phases of the current disruption? What can we do? Um, you know, it, again, insurance is not gonna cover everything and it's not gonna cover, you know, all the acts of God, if you will, but there are certain things. And I think this is probably an area right in here, preventing and preparing uh, for employee illnesses, right? understanding how to contact them, how do you retain them? We talked about, you know, what are the critical roles? Um, how do we do web conferencing? We, we're a great example tonight. I mean, we've, we've got, I think I see 29 participants on the call, Phil, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? So we do have tools and, and Florida Makes does work with some of these instruments. I, from a personal background and experience, think one of the most critical things for any company that is in, you know, who their main asset, and I don't want to call it as asset per se, but employees are their main, um, I'll, I'll say asset, if you will. Um, you know, do we have a skill set matrix? Do we have the processes? Because when you have a work instruction, we can bring in groups. 
um, in a production line, maybe moving forward, you don't want everybody to mix and mingle. Maybe you want, you know, specific lines, dedicated lines. You maybe now we want to build barriers just in case. And, and I'm not saying about, you know, huge walls, but just other things that will get us ahead of the ballpark. And I think one of the things we've also thought about is, oh, I just have the sniffles. I'm going to go to work. Oh, I feel just good enough to go to work. And, you know, I think our today environment, while I'm not an expert at all in the medical field and don't, you know, plan to, but we may want to rethink strategically what our HR policies are. And I think that's another area that we delve into with the BCA and the BCP helping different businesses. I had one person say, um, we had a situation with Dorian and we weren't sure whether we were going to operate or not. We weren't sure if it's going to be here or not. So they said, okay, every, you know, I really go home. And when it was time to come back, which is not, fortunately we didn't get hit at all really here. And they said, well, 24 hours later, we expect all the employees back, but that wasn't the employees expectations. So they were short on a manufacturing line because they hadn't communicated the expectation in advance. So if we had the plan in place, we would have said, if we go down and it, you know, you have to, you know, listen to the audio and our expectation is that from the time we tell you to come back, you need to make plans to be back 24 hours in advance. If you took off to another country for three weeks and then came back, no, that's not acceptable. But again, you, you know, it's how we put it in writing and how we communicate to employees what the expectation is before, during, and after crises of different magnitudes. So, you know, this part right here is probably very, very um, apropos right now. And Phil, um, you, you'll make these um, available, I believe, to the group? Yes, we can, we can make the, uh, this PDF and, uh, and the presentation, presentation available, Steve, on, on, the, uh, on the website. Uh, we have the recording of this as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And if there's room, if there's space for that, we'll, we'll also make that available there or, or in some other place that we'll let you know about. Okay. And then I think for the, for the main part right here is probably what everybody, if you don't get anything else for our current situation since you asked the question, here are official websites that really have the guidance that we should all be working to. Um, rather than somebody who is not an expert in these areas talking to you about it, we've put some bullets together, but here are the main websites that you can go to for, you know, official information and communication. And I would say that's really important to communicate to all your organization from top to bottom and everywhere is it's really important that we follow the official communication because there's just so much that gets mixed in that is not official that it could be misleading, that it could give us the incorrect guidance. And, and so as Florida makes, we too want to stick to the websites and the guidance that are the official, you know, um, masterminds or, or, you know, knowledge base of our current situation and guidance for that. Okay. Any other questions? Other questions, yeah. Silent clap. Quiet crowd. Okay. Uh, everybody's on mute, so you can unmute yourself if you do have a question. Okay. Um, I, uh, uh, there's a couple of things. I want to thank Debbie very much for, for joining us tonight and, and uh, uh, having the flexibility through all the changes we had to make from a uh, dinner presentation with, with a dinner to, uh, to, to this virtual presentation. Um, and, uh, and again, thanks, thank you, Debbie, for, for your expertise and, uh, and the thank information you. that you provided from, uh, from your perspective of having done uh, a number of, uh, of efforts in, in business continuity and, and, and resiliency. Um, thank you, Phil, for having me. I really appreciate it. And I, I hope we've given some pointers if you have specific questions. Um, you know, again, you've gotten a lot of contact information. You've got mine. I'm sure you know how to get a hold of Phil. Um, Amy's is on there. Uh, we're more than delighted to, you know, field any questions. And if we don't have the immediate information, uh, be a resource for you to get you the right answer. So, uh, you know. And so, and just to uh, two more. Job. Thank you again, Debbie. Uh, Thanks, and there's Phil. just two more housekeeping items, please. Uh, we've got first the, um, um, the survey. I will, I will put the 
uh, survey QR code and, and the actual website, the URL, up on the screen here in just a moment. Uh, so if you could complete that survey, we would appreciate it. And also when we're done with that, um, I have the names of, of most of you who are on the line and most of the contact information. If you want, I'll read off the names that I do have with contact information. And, and if you want credit for attending tonight, the RU credit for ASQ, um, please, I'll, I'll put my contact information up as well. You can send me an email or if you want to hang around at the end, uh, you can give me that directly over, over this line. Um, I'll take their contact information that way as well. But, uh, but first, we'll get to the uh, survey. And Debbie, I'm going to, um, let's see. I'm going to see if I can stop your presentation. Or maybe you have to do that. There you go. OK, we're done there. Let me get um, the, um, the QR code up on the screen. Okay, got to share. Uh, let's see. It'll only take me a moment here. Okay, should be coming up. There it is. That's the QR code and that's the URL. So you can either scan the code on your smartphone at this point if you want to do that or type that uh, that code that, that URL into into your browser and uh, if you could complete the uh, survey I'd appreciate that and Sean you can tell me if you start seeing entries into the uh, into the survey please And while you're doing that, if you can maybe listen to a few of the comments I have to make about the next month's uh, ASQ section meeting, we had planned on April 16th a, a plant tour at a manufacturing company in uh, Broward County. At this point, it's still scheduled, but we really don't know, as you can imagine, what the, what the conditions will be in another three to three and a half weeks. So uh, uh, it, there's a good chance that that could be postponed as well, but we will uh, keep everybody advised as to, as to how that and when that happens, if it does. Um, so that would be in April, our April 16th uh, event was to be a plant tour at a manufacturing company in Broward County, in um, actually in Pompano Beach. And uh, at this point, we don't know if that will still go forward. Let me see. Uh, Steve, go ahead and, uh, and make your uh, announcement. Uh, you've got an announcement about the student section, please. Yeah, if you, could, uh, if you could let me share my screen, I'll take you to the website and show you how people, we're having a, uh, a student branch uh, virtual meeting coming up. If you can stop okay. sharing your screen, thank you very much. And I'll go ahead and grab it real quick. I'll be as quick as I can, let me go into here. So I'm sharing my Google thingy. We go to our here. Bear with me for a sec. Okay, so this is actually also on the 1510 um, LinkedIn site, but I'll take you over to our the student branch site. So Dr. Borchert here is uh, giving a presentation, and it is also going to be through a. Um, through a, a Zoom meeting, 
And so this one actually requests you to register first as opposed to just show up. So please do that. And once you do register, you will get a, a URL for joining the meeting. And so please do that and uh, keep an eye on things like this because we encourage all of our, our members to, um, to uh, all of the senior members to please join our student branch members and, uh, and help them understand the important parts about, Dr. Warcher will talk about current trends and process improvement and it's his area of uh, advanced electronics and manufacturing, but he's also going to be helping students. So your, your points of view are always appreciated. So please see if you can make that and uh, we'll be zooming there too. All right, I'm done, thanks. Okay, thanks Steve. And Debbie, uh, did you, uh, you said earlier that, that uh, you would be willing to offer a, a free uh, hour or a couple of hours of consultation with anyone that, uh, that needed um, uh, some, some, or had questions even about the sure. business continuity, is that correct? Yeah, if you, um, I thought we were gonna, that was gonna be our-, our Yeah, okay, I just wanted to confirm. That. Absolutely, and we can, do that. we can definitely do that. Okay, so, so Sean, what, uh, what's the number that, uh, that uh, Debbie should select between what and what? Oh, can't can't understand what you're saying, Sean. <laughs> no, is it just me or is everybody else having difficulty? I can't I, hear. Yeah, we can't understand what you're saying. Um, chat it to you. Yeah, chat it. Send it to the chat, uh, and then uh, Debbie, what we're going to do is ask you to. Uh, uh, to, to provide or to, to select one number. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Sean, Sean, Sean. Waiting for that. Okay. A number between one and 10, Debbie. Huh. Okay. How about we go midway with five? Okay. Five. So five, Sean, who's, uh, who's number five? He's going to have to text that to me too. So we'll, we'll uh, have that in a second here. While we do that, I'll share my contact information. Okay. Uh, let's see. Nope, I don't have uh, don't have a response yet from Sean. Um, let's see. Okay, well that, that's my uh, my contact information. Let me let me stop sharing. Maybe that's that's the issue. Yeah. Okay. So Sean, have you responded? Um, yes. Iris, Iris Bari. So yes. congratulations, Iris. You will. Uh, I've got your contact information, Iris. So we'll we'll be in touch, and uh, Debbie, Debbie, and or I will will be in touch with you about that. that. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for also for that. And so thank that. you, Debbie. Uh, uh, <laughs> and again, I see Iris's I just, chat. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> cool. So, um, uh, so I just want to mention Phil as a last closing note. Also, um, yes, go if, ahead. If, if anyone didn't catch the contact information, I am uh, on LinkedIn and use it quite avidly. So, uh, be willing to connect with anybody who has questions and maybe didn't pick up on the email or phone number. And if they want to get to you through me. Feel free as well, as well to contact me. I, I can I can put you in touch with Debbie. Okay. So now the last thing, like I said, I just want to read off the names of the people who I have who registered and I and therefore I have all their contact information. Um, and if you if you don't uh, hear your name, if you could please then just uh, like I said, hang around or email me the contact information. You should be seeing my contact uh, my my email address up online. But I have I have Brian Kaiser. Uh, Mikhail Bunich, uh, Judith Gottesman, uh, Kylie Lauderdale. I have uh, Amy Tong, Asifa Akbarali, Herve Cantave, Eduardo Suarez, Rafael Ardia, uh, Sean Curry, Iris, of course, Margaret Clifton, uh, Luz Zucci, Frank Kistner, Marisol Colon, uh, 
um, Winfred Holloway, Steve Kramer, and Liliana Alsate, and Carolina Leon. So those are the names that I have. That's the information that I have for the contact information. If you didn't hear your name, again, either send me an email at the contact on the on the screen, or if you want to wait here, I, I will hang around a few minutes. And if anybody wants to give me that information directly, I'd be happy to take it. So uh, to everyone else then, thank you very much. We appreciate um, your participation tonight. Uh, kind of a, a new venue for all of us, I think, even though we've, as I said earlier, we we are streaming our in-person meetings as well, but um, um, but this was was a was a, a kind of a new format for most of us, I guess, because most of us have not participated in that virtual streaming yet. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of this, again, you can use my contact information. Let me know, and I can direct you to uh, the right uh, person in ASQ and in, in, in the section if it if it doesn't pertain to me. But uh, I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, so again, thank you all and have a good night and good luck to us all. See you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Great job. Thank you. thank you, Deborah. Hey, Phil. This is Jimena Martinez. I didn't hear my name called. Yes, I saw your name on the, the list, but I, I didn't see you, I mean, on the screen, but I didn't see you in the registration. So I don't have your contact information, Jimena. Go ahead. What did, what did you want to pass that to me now? I'll tell you what, hold on a second. Let me stop recording. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop the recording.